joined by Sarah, and today we are really excited to be joined by two-time LPGA winner and Callaway staffer Morgan Pressel and her dog Zoe. Morgan, how's it going? It's going. Uh, Zoe, you'll say hi. This is your, this hi, your cameo. <laughs> she so looks she looks thrilled bandana. doesn't she <laughs> so excited for her her live periscope <laughs> facebook youtube debut um no we are so happy to have you on today um you know one of the things to come out of this kind of like shutdown is that we get more chances to talk to our tour staff um which has been really great and we you know last week just heard that the LPGA is officially coming back at the end of July which is super exciting um but some news on the PGA tour of course is that three people including a caddy have tested positive for covid so how are you feeling hearing that news and do you feel safe to go back out there in a month yeah it's an interesting thing that's going on right now i mean you know with it with uh, restaurants reopening and businesses reopening um, which is certainly good for the economy, but you're seeing definitely an increase in spike, a spike in cases. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I actually have had a couple discussions with my husband the last couple of days about it. Just, um, you know, we're just going to have to be more careful. Be, I mean, I feel like we've been super careful here at home. You know, I have barely left the house. Uh, we've cooked at home every night. You know, we've, we've really kind of, um, done plenty of social distancing, if you will. So I, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's my job, so I need to go play and need to uh, kind of go about my business, but I'm just going to have to take certainly as many precautions as possible, probably even more so than our, than what are recommended of us. Um, so I just think that I'm just going to have to be careful, you know, and, and it's the risk, you know, you take to do your job, I guess. And, um, you know, should we test positive, just, you know, quarantine, self-isolate for, for the 14 days or however long um, it's supposed to be and, and go continue about our business. Do you think the LPGA has an advantage now that it's starting um, a little bit later in the month and has time to learn more about safety protocols? Yeah, I think the LPGA is definitely taking notes. You know, we're trying to see what best practices are, what's working that the PGA Tour has been doing, what um, maybe we could do better. And I'm sure, I mean, the PGA Tour is continually learning. It's uh, it's uh, waters nobody's been on before. So we're, we're all just kind of learning and trying to navigate uh, while giving opportunities to play. And I mean, the only thing for me is starting a month in a month is cases are probably going to continue to rise. So um, that might make it a little bit more challenging, but um, as with this whole situation, nobody has been able to predict much of the future. So uh, I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah. So starting in a month, where is your game at? How are you feeling and how much have you been practicing at home? Yeah, I think it's uh, just about time to start kind of ramping up some practice, you know, think about if you come back, off of an off season, um, you know, about a month out would be when I'd really start to ramp up and get back into it. I was actually thinking earlier today, it's been, it seems like forever since I teed it up in Australia and that was in February. Um, you know, we, we had our golf courses closed for a little bit here. So there was a period of time where I really didn't play any golf. I had um, a net in the backyard and kind of, it was actually a good opportunity to break down my swing and work on some real fundamentals without, um, without being result oriented, result based. Um, so, uh, then once I transitioned back to the grass, uh, real grass, you know, I felt, I felt pretty good about it. And, um, it's also just a little bit strange. I work with Martin Hall. I've only had the opportunity to see him twice. Um, a lot of clubs around here aren't having guests and things like that. So practice is a little bit um, different, so to speak. You know, you got, got to book a tea time on the range just to go hit some balls, which I'm going to go do here in a little bit. And, um, but yeah, time to ramp it up. I haven't been playing a ton, but, um, you know, I've been working out a lot, trying to stay on top of my fitness uh, so that it translates well uh, when time comes to start back up again. What part of your game are you most comfortable with and what are you the most excited about to start up again? Hmm, that's a good question. What part of my game am I most comfortable with? Um, I'm not really sure. I, um, I'd say maybe my short game. I mean, I'd say my weakness in general is typically my ball striking, which is what I spend the most time working on. Um, 
and I'm just excited to compete. I'm excited to get back out there. Um, you know, I love to compete. I certainly love golf, but I, I think I love competing even more. So, um, I think I'm just really looking forward to getting under the gun again, you know, those, that nervous energy, um, everything that comes with playing competitive golf. Yeah. So how do you, you know, keep that competitive edge, even in like a practice session, you said you're going to ramp it up. What does that entail mentally for you? Um, I think it just, it, I transitioned from probably spending more time on the range to spending more time on the golf course. And I'm not the type of person who really uh, keeps score in practice. Some people love to do that. I never really have. I um, use practice more as just that as practice. Um, but it's more about hitting shots on the golf course, uh, picking targets, hitting shots both ways, um, playing with different winds, things that uh, variables that you never really get um, or you never would get if you just sat on a range for a couple hours. <laughs> so I think that's what I mean by ramp it up. Just, just really start taking it to the golf course. I like to, I usually spend the off season working a lot on the range. And then, um, when it comes close to time to play, you know, let's go see, let's, let's figure out how to get the ball in the hole as fast as possible. <laughs> not just, <laughs> uh, not just hit balls on the range. So what about time with your caddy? I know you guys um, are close. You've been together for quite a while and um, it really is like the team aspect of golf. What have your conversations been and is he out there with you yet? Unfortunately, he is not out with me, which is unusual because we live um, about 20 minutes from each other. I've seen him a few times for dinner. He's come over to the house and we've kind of sat out back in a, like a social distancing <laughs> setup <laughs> for dinner. And um, so that's been nice. We've still at least been able to see each other. He celebrated his big 50th birthday. So we did have a little, <laughs> a little, little mini party for him, which was, which was fun. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's been different. Usually he is out at least once a week and an off week with me uh, practicing, but unfortunately right now that we can't do that quite yet. Um, but I, you know, he's, he's the best he's been with me for 12 years. He's, uh, you know, I kid my caddy, but also one of my closest friends. So, um, you know, I'm thankful for that relationship and whenever it's time to get back going, I'm sure we'll just, we'll jump right back in. What do you think made that relationship between you and your caddy so strong? Like 12 years is really, really amazing. Um, where did you start from and how did you build upon that? Yeah, I think, um, well, I knew him before um, he started caddying on tour. So I just asked him if I was kind of looking for a caddy and I asked him if he'd want to come out on tour. And, um, you know, I think we were friends before we had a working relationship. And I mean, he's not afraid to call me out of my, for my crap. <laughs> he's not <laughs> afraid to, you know, we just have a, we have a little bit of a different relationship in that fashion. We're just such good friends. Sorry, that's guard dog over there. I don't know if you can hear her. She's vicious, vicious guard dog. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just think we're we're such good friends that that really um, um, has been great for our working relationship as well. You did mention that you've been keeping up on your fitness and um, we have a little Peloton group here in the office, including um, my boss, Jeff Newbarth. And I know you were a big part of the race for unity this last weekend, which raised over $80,000 for a couple of charities. What was it like to be a part of that? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, race for unity literally went from concept to event within 10 days. So, um, you know, I worked really hard with, with uh, a few, we have our own little like Peloton group that kind of came out of um, this lockdown situation where a bunch of ladies in the golf industry like to ride together and it kind of came out of a group chat. Um, you know, what if we wrote, wrote our, wrote our bikes for charity? <laughs> and, um, and so Tiffany, Joe, Jihei Lee, Henny Zul, and myself, we kind of took that idea and ran with it. And so the four of us kind of pulled it all together pretty quickly. And, um, and just like, I mean, you know, the golf world, everybody is so generous. Everybody um, is so willing to help. So many players jumped on board, people from all over the industry wanting to participate, wanting to help us spread the word and um, got creative people who didn't have bikes for, you know, I want to host a yoga session or I'm going to do a circuit training and, and just to really 
try and get people involved and get the word out. And um, I mean, it's the only reason why we were able to raise $80,000 within about five days was because of everybody's willingness um, and, and, and people recognizing that this is something that we really need to commit to for long term in the golf industry, which is to diversify the sport. And, um, you know, through the, you mentioned we're um, two charities were LPGA USGA girls golf and the Renee Powell grants. Uh, and then, which specifically will help um, young girls and black communities to get access to the game. We're big on golf's an expensive sport. We want to give people access education. Golf is such a gift for all of us. So if we could give it to, to any young girl, but certainly um, reach out specifically to black communities and to help get help bring them into the sport and welcome them as well as with PGA works, which, uh, and their fellowship program, which offers a one year paid. Um, it's not an internship. It's really an immersion program within uh, the PGA section, an office of the PGA section to teach them about the industry. I mean, it's an $84 billion business, you know, very few people are professional golfers. There are so many people who work within the industry who have no golf experience. And, um, so really reaching out, um, to talented people from diverse backgrounds and, uh, and introducing them into the golf industry. So building this within 10 days is really, really impressive. Um, and is, I bet it's a really hard thing to do. What do you feel like was your biggest challenge while you worked on this? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get much sleep and, <laughs> and more just kind of the way my brain works is like, um, I, and the other three ladies that I was working on were West Coast. So I kind of wake up in the middle of the night, you know, at 2 a.m. or something. And I'd, I'd read a text that they had sent after I went to bed. And then I'd, I'd like have an idea like, okay, we need a website. We need like a real website. I've never made a website before. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm like tossing and turning in bed. When am I going to make this website? We don't have much time. I literally just got out of bed and made a website at 3 a.m with absolutely no experience, but thank God for websites that make it really easy to make other websites. Yeah. Shout out and to Wix and WordPress and all those things. <laughs> exactly. I had, I'd never, I'd never had any experience with it, but to be fair, I, I managed to do it pretty quickly. And, um, but yeah, so it was just, it was sleep, like having everything come together so fast. I would just wake up in the middle of the night with an idea. We have to do this or, or what about this? And, and then I couldn't go back to sleep. So then I just woke up and started working because that's just the way my brain works. So. Um, we did get a listener question from a friend of ours. His name is Clayton and he's with um, the Hackers Paradise. He says, you know, there's a lot of stories about you and your interaction with your fans. I know you always take the time for them. Are you intentional about creating those personal experiences for them? 100%. Um, I remember when I was, 10, 11 years old and went out to go watch um, the LPGA, a couple of LPGA tournaments here in South Florida in my backyard. I remember the personal experiences that I had with players, even when I played in the open in 2001. I mean, I was a tiny little pipsqueak at 13 and I just, you know, I was there playing with my idols and to think that you could change a kid's day just by simply handing them a signed golf ball. And, you know, they look back at their parent, like, Oh my God, like they just interacted with me or said something to me or so, you know, I have from personal experience and how much of an impact that made on me to think that, you know, maybe the kid was dragged out to the course, didn't want to go, you know, and you've had, you have this interaction with them and now they're a golf fan for life. Now they want to go hit balls in their backyard. They, now they're dragging their parents out to the range, which, you know, if, if we can, I mean, the LPGA tour is full of players who really interact with their fans and um, in, in our travels, it's really been fun is I've created these relationships in different, um, at different tournaments and year in and year out, um, the same youngsters come out and I get to watch them grow, which is also a lot of fun. Yeah, we, um, I think we've talked about this before on the Callaway Golf Podcast too, how special that is for you to be able to watch pro. And you also have your um, foundation, which luckily was able to have their annual golf charity tournament right in January. Um, where are things at now, you know, um, and what's, what's up next for the foundation this year? 
I think um, just like everything, it's a little bit of a question mark. We've um, definitely started already kind of brainstorming. How can we be creative? Um, our, our big fundraiser is a golf event. I mean, we do a few other things throughout the year, but the ma majority of our funds come from uh, two day events in January. And uh, we have a dinner and an auction with 400 plus people and then about 250 golfers the next day. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. I get uh, my friends from the tour to come and really interact and entertain our, our donors. And how is that going to be affected by uh, COVID? I don't think anybody knows quite yet, but um, I think we have to just be creative. How do we, are we still going to be able to play golf? That's kind of the hope is, you know, worst case we can still play golf. Um, maybe some form of an online auction, just, just be creative, have to force us like everybody has had to be creative in ways to interact without necessarily being together. And um, so I think that's, you know, we still have to support our hospital here at Boca Raton Regional, um, support our mamma van and the genetic testing center. So we definitely still need to be able to have some form of a of an event so that uh, we can continue to give back to our community. I think we're just gonna have to be a little bit more creative on, on how we go about it. But uh, we've got about six months to figure that out. So we'll start, we'll start thinking about it for sure. <laughs> Looks like we have actually another listener question coming in from Twitter in just a moment. Um, nice sip of coffee, it's uh, nice and early here. We have quite a bit coming up in our day. Uh, well, while Josh is getting to that, um, what have things been like with your dog? I know she just turned one, right? And that was like, that was a big thing for you getting a dog. It was a big thing um, for me to get a dog. I have been scared of dogs my whole life. And it's, it, I, it was just a little bit of a process for me. I had started to um, be more comfortable with smaller dogs and that was okay. You know, I felt like a small dog I could overpower if, if I felt anxious or, or something felt like it was maybe going to bite me or, or whatever. And then, um, I had a, a friend of a close friend of ours had a dog who was a little bit older, who they've sadly since had to put down, but, um, she was getting comfortable with her was definitely a big thing for me. Um, being around her a little bit. And then, I don't know, eventually I was just like, okay, I want a dog. And um, so my husband and I agreed on a golden doodle after a lot of convincing that, <laughs> that we should get a dog, especially with our travel schedules. But um, she's been the best. Um, I absolutely love her. She's the sweetest thing. And um, it's fun to travel with her. She's, um, she's really, really good on airplanes, really, um, really good. Um, the only thing that she really struggles with in travel is hotel rooms, um, just because she thinks she is a guard dog. But um, other than that, it's, uh, it's just awesome to have her as a companion, you know, to come back after a round and see her wagging tail. She's just happy to see you no matter what you shot. And, um, you know, the unconditional love of a pup. I, I'm sad, not sad. I mean, I know why I was scared of dogs, but, uh, you know, I spent my whole life without, uh, really understanding, um, the joy that they bring. Do you ever, Let's, sorry, Lexa, go ahead there. Go ahead. I was just going to say, do you ever get to take her out on the golf course or when you practice at all? Um, sometimes on occasion, um, there, are, it's not, um, a couple of the places that I practice aren't typically, aren't really dog friendly. So, um, there's one or two places that I'm able to take her, but, um, Sometimes she's got a really thick coat too. So here in Florida, it's just hot, um, hot for her to be out there for as long as I would want to be out there for, unless it was more um, kind of in the winter time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we have at Callaway are these true biz golf balls. Did you know how big your custom true biz would end up being? <laughs> no. And I, I remember when, um, when Callaway first came to me and asked, to play the Truvis ball and wanted um, to do it as a, you know, October breast cancer awareness month uh, partnership with the foundation. I was like, at first I was kind of like, huh, like I've never hit anything but a white golf ball. 
And then I'm like, why, why are you even thinking twice about this? This is the greatest idea ever. And, um, you know, after about a week, I don't even really, you know, the, the Truvis design didn't bother me and in, in, in any fashion, you know, it was just, that's just the ball that I played and I got used to it right away. And it's my same golf ball. So it, mm -hmm. it's, um, it reacts exactly the same, the Chrome soft and it's, um, we talked about kids earlier kids love that golf ball <laughs> like they get so excited I remember there was one time I kind of hit it over towards the ropes on one hole <laughs> and this little girl she goes oh my gosh you have the coolest golf ball like she just thought it was the neatest thing that I have a pink soccer ball and mm -hmm. um so I definitely try and after rounds give them out to the kids and um and I mean it's it's fun to it's fun to play it it's fun to see you know, when you hit a chip and you catch it crisp, how it spins in the air. And, you know, you can definitely get a lot of feedback um, when you putt and how it rolls to see um, if you're stroking the ball properly and if it's rolling end over end like it should. So it's definitely, um, it's fun. It looks cool. And it's got, you know, feedback, tons of feedback abilities. Speaking of golf ball, we are looking for testers for our new Chrome Soft X. If anybody listening would like to test Chrome Soft X, go to CallawayGolf.com and sign up for that now. Um, Morgan, thank you so much for joining us today. If people don't already follow you, um, please tell them where they can see pictures of Zoe, hear about your Peloton rides, and learn more about your golf journey. Yeah, um, let's see. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at mpressel, Facebook, um, Morgan Pressel. Um, all of them have the verified checks. So make sure to check for that. And yeah, I, I love hearing from fans. I love interacting with everyone. So definitely make sure to make sure to check it out. I read all the comments. I, um, I comment back. I'm pretty involved um, actively with the social media. So um, definitely reach out and follow me. Yeah, give her a follow. Um, thank you so much for listening and watching this live episode of Girls in Golf. For all of our other episodes, you can check CallawayGolf.com. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, and we will see you next Wednesday.